So good morning guys. I hope you guys are safe in the home, isn't it? So during this pandemic period, our classes will be going through the online mode. I hope you guys will learn through the online sessions and uh, I think I hope you guys will be supposed to be safe in the home, isn't it? Isn't it? So for previous sessions we see about the uh, color coding carbon resistors and uh, the temperature coefficient of resistance, isn't it? Temperature coefficient of resistance. So for color coding carbon resistors. We know that uh, uh, the carbon resistors, what is that? The carbon resistors consist of a ceramic core in which a crystalline carbon will be deposited, isn't it? And the carbon uh, resistors, what is that? The carbon resistors have uh, three lines and four lines. So the first two lines represents the numbers and the third line represents the multiplier and the fourth number represents the tolerance, isn't it? The first two lines represents the, in the significant numbers are the numbers and the third line represents the multiplier and the fourth line represents the tolerance, isn't it? Isn't it? And uh, we know that, I hope you guys know the color code, isn't it? We Roy of Great Britain have a very good watch. From that we draw the color code. From this color code we find the value of our resistors, isn't it? So what is carbon resistors? The carbon resistor consists of a ceramic core in which a small crystalline carbon will be deposited. In which a small crystalline carbon will be deposited. It consists of four lines. The first two lines indicates the what is that? The first two lines indicates the significant numbers and third line represents the multiplier and the fourth line represents the tolerance. Then we see the temperature coefficient of resistance. Right? So for the temperature coefficient of resistance, what is my what is the temperature coefficient of resistance? For every, uh, the temperature coefficient of resistance is defined as uh, the ratio of increase in resistance per degree rise in temperature, isn't it? So what is temperature coefficient of resistance? The ratio of increase in resistance per degree rise in temperature. So what is the temperature coefficient of resistance? The ratio of increase in resistance per degree rise in temperature. So for the the expression rho t is equal to rho 0 into 1 plus alpha into t minus T0. Okay. Similarly for the resistance, what is that? Similarly for resistance, what is that? RT is equal to R0 into 1 plus alpha into T minus T0. Yes, right? From this for conductor, when the temperature increases, resistivity also increases. Um, for semiconductors, when the temperature increases, the alpha will be negative, isn't it? So when the temperature for conductor, what is that? For conductors, Alpha will be positive. Why it is positive? When the temperature increases, resistance also increases. But the first semiconductor, alpha will be negative. Why it is negative? When the temperature increases, the resistance will be decreases. So a material which having a negative temperature coefficient, what is that? A material which having a negative temperature coefficient is called as a thermistress. A material which having a negative temperature coefficient is called as a thermistress. So this are we see about the previous sessions. So today's session we are going to see about the electrical energy and the electrical power. <coughs> so when a battery, what is that? When the battery will be connected to the conductor, what is that? When the ba battery will be connected to the conductor, the current will be established, isn't it? So that uh, the battery provides the potential energy supply, electric potential energy supply to the system. So consider the circuit. What is that? Consider a circuit containing a battery of voltage D is connected to the resistor of resistance R. Okay. Consider a battery of voltage D is connected to the resistor of resistance R. So we make a point A, B, C, D. Okay. So when a battery will be connected to the circuit, the current will be established, isn't it? So, we are assuming a charge. Okay? We are assuming a charge D. What is that? We are assuming a charge D2. Okay? It's moving from a point A to B. Then it moves towards the C to D to the resistor R. Then back to D. So, we are assuming a charge D2. is moving to point A to B. Okay? Then... C to D through the resistor R, then back to A. Okay? So consider a battery having a voltage B. 
consider a battery having a voltage V is connected to the resistor, resistance having a resistor R. Okay, and we are assuming a charge DQ. What is that? We are assuming a charge DQ is moving from point A to B, then passes to the point C to D, then back to A. Back to A. Okay, so when a charge DQ moving to the point A to B, when a charge DQ moving to the point A to B, it gains the electric potential energy of it again the electric potential energy of V into DQ. It again the electric potential energy of V into DQ. But by the battery, they losses what is that? Due to the chemical reactions, they losses is chemical potential energy. They losses the same amount of chemical potential energy. Okay, they losses the same amount of chemical potential energy of a battery will be decreases with the same amount. Okay, now the whole battery will be one is that the potential energy will be out the charge will be moving to the resistor having a resistance R. Okay, when the charge will be moving to the resistor, they collide it with the atom, they losses the potential energy. What is that? They losses the potential energy. They losses the potential energy. So the rate of loss at the electrical potential energy will be calculated. Okay. The rate of loss of electrical potential energy at the resistance will be calculated. So the electrical power is defined as what is that? The electrical power is defined as the rate at which the loss. What is that? The rate at which the electrical potential energy will be delivered. So guys, what is my electrical power? The electrical power is defined as what is that? The electrical power is defined as the rate at which the electrical potential energy will be delivered. So, P is equal to du by dg. du by dg. Okay. So, if you substitute this one by the V into dq by dg. But we know that dq by dg is equal to I. So, if you substitute this one by the P is equal to V into I. Where V represents the potential difference of a battery, I represents the current flowing through the circuit. So the expression for the power, what is that? The expression for the power P is equal to V into I. And the unit of a power is, what is that? The unit of a power is Watt. What's unit of power? Watt. Okay. We know that we have a bulb. The bulb will be represented by the unit of power will be 5 volt, 6 volt, 8 volt, 10 volt and 10, 12 volt, isn't it? Isn't it? So, the unit of power will be what? Okay? Clear? If the potential difference across the bat, uh, potential difference across the bulb will be over when it is compared or when it will be represented in a bulb or when it will be marked in a bulb, uh, the bulb will be fixed. The bulb will be fixed. Okay? Or if the value of the bulb is represented in a poten uh, bulb, Potential difference in a bulb will be over than the potential difference they are the person means the bulb will be fixed. Okay, clear. So guys, what is the electrical power? The electrical power is defined as the, the potential energy, what is the, the rate at which the potential energy, electrical potential energy will be delivered. So P is equal to du by dg and du is equal to V into dq by dt, dq by dt is equal to I. So P is equal to V into I. And what's the unit of electrical power? The electrical power is defined, the unit of electrical Okay, usually you have a bulb is right? 5 volt, 6 volt, 12 volt, 18 volt and 25 volt is right? If the potential difference across the bulb will be over than the present means it will be fused. Okay, clear. Then we are going to go into the what's the formula for I B by R and what's the formula for B I into one. So we substitute the two formulas. So if we substitute the two formula means what you get down, P is equal to what's the formula for B? I into R is then substitute means what you get down. I R into I, so P is equal to I square into R. Okay, then what's the formula for I? B by R, isn't it? Substitute is what you get P is equal to B into B by R, so P is equal to B square by R. Okay, and the electrical energy is defined as what is that? The electrical energy is defined as. Okay, so what's the formula for electrical energy? The electrical energy is defined as. By product of, I'll multiply by the 
power into the duration of a time. Duration of a time when the instrument or material or the bulb will be on. The duration of a time when it is on, on. Okay. So what's the formula for energy? The electrical energy is defined as. Okay. Our electrical energy is to be calculated by using multiplied by the power into time. The time taken the duration when it is on. The time taken by the duration when it is on. Okay. And the unit of power will be volt. And the unit of time will be second. And the unit of energy will be joule. But the electrical energy is the unit of electrical energy will be what is that? The unit of electrical energy is kilowatt hour. So what's the unit of electrical energy? Kilowatt hour. So one kilowatt hour is equal to 3.6 into 10 power 6 joule. What is that? One kilowatt hour is equal to what is that? One kilowatt hour is equal to 3.6 into 10 power 6 joules. 1 kilowatt hour is equal to 3.6 into 10 power 6 joules. Okay. 3 point, <coughs> 3 point 6 into 10 power 6 joules. So guys, what is the electrical energy and power? Consider a battery having a voltage V is connected by a resistor having a resistor R. So assuming the charge D2 is moving from point A to B, then moving towards the point C to D, again back to the point A. So when it is moving from A point A to B, it gains the potential energy Pu is equal to B into DQ. Because uh, the chemical reaction is what is done. By using a chemical reaction on the battery, the chemical potential energy also decreases by the same amount. And when it is moving towards the resistor, they collide with the atom, they lost the potential energy. What is done? They lost the potential energy. So the rate of loss at the resistors can be calculated. So the electrical power is defined as what is done? The electrical power is defined as the rate at which the electrical potential energy is delivered. The rate at which the electrical potential energy is delivered. So P is equal to du by dg. P is equal to du by dg. So du is equal to V into d2. So V into dq by dt. dq by dt is equal to i. So P is equal to V into i. Okay, so here B represents the potential difference, I represents the current, and the unit of power will be what? <coughs> and I wants the V is equal to I into R, I is equal to V by R. So first we substitute I into R, then we substitute B by R. So what you get B is equal to I square into R, and then B is equal to V square by R. Then the energy will be calculated by multiplying the power into the time, the duration of time when it is on. So P is equal to P into time. Here the P represents the unit of power will be what? Time will be seconds and the energy will be joules. So the unit of electrical energy is equal to kilowatt hour. So 1 kilowatt hour is equal to 3.6 into 10 power 6 joule. 3.6 into 10 power 6 joule. Okay? Clear? So here it will be one of my important two more questions. Distinguish between the electrical power and electrical energy. So what is electrical power? The rate at which the electrical potential energy will be delivered. And what is electrical energy? The multiply of power and the duration of time when it will be on. And here the unit of power will be what? Here the unit of power will be, unit of electrical energy will be kilowatt hour. Clear? Clear. The next one is an electrical cell and the battery. Next one is an electrical cell and battery. So electrical cell. Guys, what is the electric cell? Cell is the device which is used to convert the chemical energy into electrical energy. So what is electrical cell? The electrical cell is the device. What is that? The electric cell is the device which is used to convert the chemical energy into electrical energy. So it consists of it consists of two electrodes. What is that? It consists of two electrodes and electrolyte solutions. It consists of two electrodes and electrolyte solutions. 
Okay, clear? So guys, what is pyrotic cell? Pyrotic cell is a device which is used to convert the chemical energy into electrical energy. It consists of two electrodes and electrolyte solution. What is that? It consists of the two electrodes which is immersed in the electrolyte solutions. Similarly, the several number of cells which connected together to form a battery. So guys, what is battery? The several number of cells which is connected together to form a battery. Okay. So when it is when a cell or a battery connected to the circuit, so what is that? When a cell or a battery will be connected to the circuit means so what is that? When a cell or a battery will be connected to the circuit means the electron from a negative terminal it move towards the positive terminal. What is that? The electron from a negative terminal to the positive terminal of the battery. Okay. So by throwing a biochemical reaction, what is that? By chemical reactions, the battery provides the potential difference. By the chemical reactions, the battery provides the potential difference. This potential difference drives the electrons move from the negative terminal to the positive terminal of a battery. By the negative terminal to the positive terminal of a battery. Okay? Clear? Clear. So by the chemical reactions, they provide the potential difference. That potential difference moves the electrons from a negative terminal to the positive terminal of a battery. Clear? Clear. So guys, what is my electric cell? Electric cell is a device which is used to convert the chemical energy into electrical energy. It consists of two electrodes immersed in a electrolyte solutions. It consists of two electrodes immersed in a electrolyte solutions. Similarly, the several number of cells connected together to form a electrical battery. The several number of cells connected together to form a electric battery. The several number of cells connected together to form a electric battery. The several number of cells connected together to form a electric battery. In which when a battery or the cells connected to the battery, the electrons will be moved from the negative terminal of a battery to the positive terminal of a battery. The electron from which move from the negative terminal of a battery to the positive terminal of a battery. Okay? Clear. So by chemical reactions, the battery or the cells provides the potential difference, this potential difference drives the electron from the negative terminal of a battery to the positive terminal of a battery. Okay? Clear? 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 <coughs> Error? So guys, what is my electric cell or battery? Electric cell is a device which is used to convert the chemical energy into electrical energy. Uh, it consists of two electrodes immersed in the they consist of two electrodes in most in the electrolyte solutions. Okay. It consists of the two electrodes in most in the electrolyte solution. The several number of electric cells connected together to form a battery. When it is connected to the circuit, means the negative terminal will be moved from a negative, uh, the electrons will be moved from the negative terminal of battery to the positive terminal. Why means? Because the battery provides a potential energy, potential difference. This potential difference moves the electron from the negative terminal to force. What is that? Electromotive force or EMF. What is that? The electromotive force. What is that? The electromotive force or EMF. Okay. So a battery or a cell. What is that? A battery or a cell is a source of electromotive force or EMF. Okay. It is a misnomer. Okay. Misnomer means it is not actually a force. Okay. It describes the potential difference in volt. Okay. The EMF describes the potential difference in volt. So what is my aim of the battery or a cell is a source of what is that? A battery or a cell is a source of electromotive force. Okay. A battery or a cell, what is that? A battery or a cell is a source of electromotive force. Okay. So the EMF is a misnomer. What is that? The EMF is a misnomer. Misnomer is it's not actually a force. It describes the potential difference in volt. Okay. It describes the potential difference in volt. Okay. What is that? It describes the potential difference in volt. So the EMF of a battery or a cell. Okay. What is that? The EMF of, of a battery or a cell is the voltage. What is that? The voltage provided by the battery. When there is no current in the external circuits. When no current in the external circuits. Okay. So the EMF of a battery or a cell is. What is that? The EMF of a battery or a cell is. The voltage provided by the battery. What is that? The voltage provided by the battery. When no external current. Or when no current will be flowed in the external circuits. When no current will be flowed in the external circuits. Okay. 
clear so that's what is electromotive force yeah, an emf or the electromotive force of a cell what is that the emf a battery or the cell is a source of a emf okay it's a misnomer actually it's a not a force it's a potential difference across the organism it's the potential difference is described in volts okay so the electromotive what is that the electromotive force what is that the electromotive force or the emf is the voltage provided by the battery when the no current will be flow in the circuits okay when the no current will be flow in the circuits so the electromotive force determine the amount of work a battery or a cell has to be determined or has to be done move a charge from one point to other point that is called as an emf so the emf determines what is that the emf determines the amount of work a battery or a cell has to done to move a charge from one point to other point to move a charge from one point to other point or move a charge in a circuit and it will be determined by i will be expressed by the greek symbol psi So guys, what is EMF? The EMF, what is that? The EMF determines what is that? The electromotive force determines the amount of work done or amount of work a battery or a cell has to done move a charge in a circuit. That is called as an EMF. So it is represented by this sign. Okay, it has no internal resistance. And the potential difference across the cell, which is equal to the EMF, what is that? The potential difference across the cell, which is equal to the EMF, what is that? The potential difference across the cell, which is equal to the EMF. Okay. Well, so we know that the battery consists of a electrodes and electrolyte solutions, and also the resistance, the resistance has a resistance in the electrolyte. Okay. And there is a resistance in flow of charges. That resistance is called as a internal resistance. The resistance is called as a internal resistance okay what is that a idea what is that a uh, battery or the cell or cell consists of electrolytes electrodes and electrolyte solutions is it so there is a resistance of flow of charges the resistance is called as a internal resistance the resistance is called as a internal resistance so for ideal battery means they having a zero resistance okay for ideal battery means they having a or for a good battery means they having a zero resistance and it will be increases by ag okay clear so guys what is my emf for the electromotive force the source a battery or a cell is a source of electromotive force the electromotive force is a misnomer misnomer means it's not actually a force it describes the potential difference in volt okay so a battery what is that a battery or a cell is a source of an emf and what's the point with this one if i uh, if emf of a cell what is that the emf of a battery or a cell is that The EMF of a battery or a cell is that the voltage provided by the battery. What is that? The voltage provided by the battery when they are uh, when no current will be flowed in the external circuits. When no current will be flowed in the external circuits. When no current will be flowed in the external circuits. And the EMF determines the amount of work. Simply, you can say that uh, the the EMF determines the amount of work a battery or a cell has to determine in moving a charge. Through the circuits, that's called as an EMF. It has a zero internal resistance, and the potential difference across cell is equal to EMF. Okay, but when battery having the electrolytes and the electrodes and electrolyte solutions, but there is a resistance of flow of charges. The resistance is called as an internal resistance that can be measured by R. Okay, that's called as an R. Okay, clear and. Uh, For ideal battery means they have a zero internal resistance and it will be increases with the ag. Clear? Clear. The next one is one of our important remark question. Internal resistance of a cell using voltmeter. What is that? Internal resistance of a cell using voltmeter. For determining the internal resistance. Voltmeter. So the voltmeter draws a feeble current for deflections. 
the voltmeter draws a feeble current for deflections since the resistance r is not included in the circuits okay since the resistance r will be not included in the circuits so the emf of a cell whose internal resistance we are going to measure is connected across a high resistance voltmeter okay is connected across a high resistance voltmeter so the voltmeter draws a feeble current for deflection the voltmeter draws a feeble current for deflection since the resistance r will be not included in the circuit okay now <coughs> so circuit is considered as a open now the circuit is considered as a open now the circuit is considered as a open circuit now the resistance r is also included in the circuit the resistance r is also included in the circuit okay so the potential drop across the resistance r is equal to the potential drop across the emf of a cell what is that the potential drop across r is equal to the potential drop the potential drop across r is equal to the potential drop across emf of a cell okay clear clear so what is the point here we say that the, the emf of a cell is measured by connecting a high resistance voltmeter across it the voltmeter it draws a feeble current for deflections okay so since circuit is considered as an open now the resistance r is also included in the circuits so the potential drop across the resistance is equal to potential drop across an emf of a cell okay so just assuming this is a 5 volt battery okay so uh, the voltmeter is used to show the it is used to measure the potential drop is right it having high resistance isn't it so it draws the feeble current for deflection so the voltmeter shows it will be 4.95 that 0.05 which is used for deflection okay now the resistance r will be included for example the resistance value will be 1 ohm okay so here how much the voltmeter will be drawn 1 ohm here also 1 ohm will be drawn in so much it how much the voltmeter will be show 3.95 clear 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 so 5 volt battery in uh, assuming a 5 volt battery will be connected across the high resistance voltmeter so what's the voltage will be there 4.95 because the voltmeter draws a feeble current for deflection when a resistance of 1 ohm will be included in the circuit the potential drop across the resistance is equal to emf of a cell so it shows the 3.95 so the potential drop across the potential drop across r what's the formula b is equal to i into r but due to the internal resistance of a cell the emf read or voltmeter reads the value less than emf of a cell actually it should show the 3.95 but it show the value of 3.75 3.75. Okay, so what's the point there? Due to the internal resistance of a cell, the voltmeter reads the value less than EMF of a cell. The voltmeter reads the value less than EMF of a cell. So the potential drop B is equal to what is that? The potential drop B is equal to psi minus I into R. Psi minus I into R. If this I R will be moved to the left hand side, the B will be moved to the right hand side. Means I R is equal to psi minus C. So this will be equation number one. This will be equation number two. So equation number two divided by one. What do you get? I R by I R is equal to psi minus B by B. I I cancel from this. R is equal to psi minus B by B into capital R. So if we know the value of internal resistance, the potential difference and the resistance, we have to measure the internal resistance of a cell. We have to measure the internal resistance of a cell. Okay. Now, due to the internal resistance, the power delivered to the circuit is not equal to the the power mentioned in the battery. Okay. Due to the internal resistance of a cell, what is that? Due to the internal resistance of a cell, the power delivered to the circuit is not mentioned the power. It's not equal to the power mentioned in the battery. So for EMF psi and the internal resistance R means the power delivered to the circuit. So this is that 
the power delivered to the circuit P is equal to I into psi. So from this expression, psi is equal to I R plus V Z. Psi is equal to I R plus V. So if you substitute it, P is equal to I into I R plus V. But we know the formula, V is equal to I into R Z. So if you substitute it, what do you get? P is equal to I into I R plus I R. So multiply the term, P is equal to I square R plus I square R. So here, I square R is represented as the power delivered to the, what is the, the power delivered to the internal resistance and I square R is represented as the, the power delivered to the electrical device. What is that? This I square, what is that? This I square R represents the, the power delivered to the internal resistance and this I square R represents the power delivered to the electrical device. Okay, so for ideal battery mix, what is that? The ideal battery means the value of I square R will be less than I square R. So the power should be delivered to the electrical device. The power should be delivered to the electrical device. Okay, clear? Clear. So guys, what's the point we are saying that the EMF from the cell will be measured by the high resistance voltmeter. The voltmeter draws a feeble current for deflections. So since it is considered as the open circuit. Now the resistance R is included in the circuits. The potential difference R, the potential drop across the resistance is equal to the potential drop across the EMF of a cell. So the potential drop across the V is equal to I into R. But due to the internal resistance of a cell, the EMF reads the value or the voltmeter reads the value less than EMF of a cell. So V is equal to psi minus I into R. From this I R is equal to psi minus V. That will be equation number 2. So 2 number divided by 1, you get the value R is equal to sin minus V by V into R. Okay. So if you know the value of R is EMF, voltmeter and the resistance of the value means uh, we measure the internal resistance of a cell. Okay. But the power delivered to the circuit is not equal to the, the power mentioned in the battery. Why means if it is a EM internal resistance psi, EMF psi and internal resistance R means the P is equal to I into psi. Psi is equal to I R plus V, V is equal to I into R, we substitute P is equal to I square R plus I square R, it is I square R represents the power delivered to the internal resistance and I square R is the power delivered to the electrical device. So if the value I square R will be less than I square R means the power will be delivered to the electrical devices. Okay. So for this session we see about the electrical energy, electrical power and what we define here or what is my electromotive force. Okay, and what is internal resistance of a cell and what is electric cell and battery. The last one, explain the internal resistance of a cell by using voltmeter. One of my important five markers, okay, clear? So I hope you understand the session.